Hi everyone, I'm here today with my good friend Rosemary Ferguson, um, who we've known for yeah, quite a few years. <laughs> um, I met Rose when Rose was a model and I was doing her hair a lot. Uh, Rose is now a functional medicine practitioner. Right? Yeah, FMP, that's right. FMP, right. Yeah. Uh, but I'll let, I'll let Rose explain that. I'm a functional medicine practitioner and a nutritionist. And I guess functional medicine just means that we look at the whole, it's basically like holistic medicine. So you look at the root cause, you want to understand why something's happening rather than just treating the symptom. I know from, I mean, from years of work that there is a, a definite, definite physical and mental connection with yeah. you and your hair. What goes on on the inside kind of having an effect on what's on the outside. Yeah. Is it dietary? Is it, are there other things or is it genetic or is it everything combined? So it's everything combined, but I would say there are the big ones of what you get, your genes. Yeah. But then what you're born with genetically doesn't necessarily dictate what your hair or anything looks like, because it's then what you eat, um, it's the environment you're in, it's the amount of stress you're under. Um, so they all come together and definitely your hair is also, you know, the health of your hair is an expression of what's going on inside, I would say, and that is emotional, physical and definitely what you do with your body. Should we actually be eating and drinking for healthy hair? I mean, is, is, there, is there a simple answer or is it complicated? You can answer it in quite a general way and, you know, it's obvious things like trying to eat fresh foods, whole foods, vegetables, but then the more it gets more complicated when you think about why? Why does that make a difference? And I think probably thinking about the microbiome in our gut and on our skin is really important. So how well, we're, how well our gut is working depends how well we break down and absorb food. So you, if it's not working well, you can eat loads of really good things, but then if you're not absorbing it, it doesn't, it doesn't work. What makes it not absorb? What, what kind of distress have an effect on that? <clears throat> so when we're stressed and we're in our fight or flight, our body is ready to run, it's trying to think fast, so our blood supply goes to our brain and our limbs, it's not in our gut. So that's why we need to try and sit, take our time when we eat and rest and digest. So if you're very stressed all the time, your body will process food as fast as it can and it will store it. It won't break it down into the tiny little nutrients we need to help support our bodily system, of which growing hair is one of them. So I know from people sitting in my chair over the years, um, probably more so now than ever before, to be honest, um, that I can see from someone's hair they're having they have problems with the hair they can't figure out the hair's changed and I can see that the hair looks poor their hair has changed they've either lost hair or it's dull or it's just not behaving like it used to be and I know that your hair does go through cycles and of course it does change and the menopause I know is a big thing mm -hmm. for that but we can talk about that afterwards but I think um, I think a lot of a lot of the problems with hair, especially thinning, um, is, I mean, right down to alopecia, is stress. Yeah. How does that affect your hair? And is, is there anything, you think there's anything you can do to, to alleviate that? Yeah. I mean, simple I, things. Simple things. Well, yeah, there are loads, but I also, but it's so true because also people have to remember that when you're very stressed, whether, as I said, whether it's physical, you know, like what you're going through, like that you're not sleeping, blah, 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 or if it's emotional, it can, it causes inflammation in the body. Inflammation is basically a cover all for just irritation to the body. So inflammation really affects your hair too. It really affects your hair too. And also the other thing that it will do is it will stop the growth cycle. So, right. so you're, so it, rather than completing a growth cycle, you might start to shed hair uh, faster. Right. And therefore you get thinning hair. Yeah. But um, inflammation is a really, really key one because it's also key to how well the hair grows. It's a key to how well you feel. Um, and so a really low anti-inflammatory diet, a low inflammation diet is really, really important. I know now, because because of my, I've got psoriatic rheumatism, psoriatic, is yeah, that it? Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. anyway, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I know <clears throat> if I eat a load of potatoes for a couple of days, I can feel it. I, I can feel nightshade. it because it's deadly nightshade. Yeah. People get scared about deadly nightshades because then they cut them all out. but. The best way to deal to to see if those are irritating is to take them out, the deadly nightshade vegetables, and then put them back in one at a time. And as you say, if you eat potato, you can feel it in your joints. Potato, potato. I mean, in, yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, I was brought up on chips. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. I absolutely love potatoes. So, but it is about balancing it out, isn't it? Yeah. I've learned about it in my 
whole day. <laughs> but it's also about listening to your body. And the thing is, we tend to eat so many things in one go that we don't know what's causing the problem. Yeah. So if you are concerned about something, remove it and then add it back in really mindfully. And actually, I suppose while we're talking about what you should and shouldn't be eating, I mean, we've been talking about what you should eat, but it's also what you shouldn't eat, yeah. actually. We should, you know, sort of like things like high sugar. I mean, we eat so much sugar. I, I'm a bit of a sugar addict. And I know you don't drink alcohol, but lots of people do. And um, that really stops the body. I mean, Is I that the sugar content really. too? Well, it's just the alcohol slows the whole body down. Right. So it's like, shit, we've got to do this again. Yeah. Here we go again. And I mean, I'm a drinker, so I, you know, so I'm not sort of like preaching. Yeah. <laughs> because but you know, you can Because you ain't no angel, right? Because I ain't no angel. <laughs> but it does, you know, so if you're really concerned about hair, things like, things that, those things cause inflammation, sugar, alcohol, too much coffee, um, you know, loads, and, if you're eating loads and loads of grains, you know, start, I would start thinking more about protein and greens and antioxidants. I'm not a big meat eater, but I do love vegetables and Portobello Road's around the corner, so that I never... I like yeah. going down there and stocking up on fruit and veg. Yeah. The other thing that I would say about stress, going back to stress, is the number one thing in my clinic is not, it's not actually food, it's lifestyle. And, and people roll their eyes because usually really stressed individuals are quite fast moving, fast yeah. thinking. They want, they want a silver bullet. And when I tell them to take a deep breath <laughs> and meditate, they roll their eyes and get quite cross about it. But actually, to, breath work is really one of the best ways to manage stress and to help your body manage stress. It's not just psychologically, it's like it literally takes your body from a sympathetic nervous system, which is your fight or flight, high cortisol, to a parasympathetic in four breaths. You can do that just by taking four deep, slow breaths. So, I do my pranayama every morning. Yeah, I mean, if you do that, that's afternoon. amazing. I say prani, pranayama, but what actually is it? I, I can't pronounce <laughs> I, it. I think it is pranayama. It, it's, oh, when you, God, no, it's when you hold one yeah. nostril tight and then you breathe yeah. in. I do nine in and 12 yeah. out yeah. six times. That, that's my little project. I mean, we could do the breathing thing. I mean, I don't want to show myself up, but I, I put my thumb on one nostril and I... and then out for 12. And, and, and you let the breath out, you empty your lungs. It's so weird. That's the Pranayama Banana Rama. I was going to move on to that when I stopped <laughs> rambling. Do you think yoga helps with de stressing? And yeah, I, I, it helped me de stress. I mean, yoga. I mean, my hair's not going to come back, sadly. But uh... <laughs> <laughs> it does, it really does help because it helps you slow down. I've been doing, doing it regularly for about 15 years now and I, I know that it's really it's really helped me because yeah. I'm quite a hyper person yeah. and I can get really kind of beyond myself very quickly yeah. and that's really helped me to well, stay in the moment as what they you're say. you're talking about as well as your morning routine so yeah. you start your day by adjusting that when we wake up we have a huge cortisol as well not huge but you know you, in theory you, cortisol is what wakes you up. And so if you can manage that, we call it waking cortisol, with it by not having a coffee straight away. You know, people have this cortisol in their system and they hit coffee straight away. All of that creates this like, oh, which in turn leads to inflammation and will impact your hair. Um, you know, so if you can do your morning routine like as you do, where you have your waking cortisol and you manage it by, you know, something like journaling, doing a bit of breath work, just giving yourself a bit of space, your, a, your day will be better, you will manage your day better. And this isn't me saying this, there's loads of science to support it. And then your stress response throughout the day will be better and more and less erratic. And then your information will be lower. Rose, it's been a pleasure. Oh, it's been so lovely. Lovely to see you always. Thank you for having me. Thank you.